It's September the 4th, 2021, and you are watching and listening to The Future of Photography. The Future of Photography. Hey. One, hey. two, three, Hello. four. I Hello. think we're complete. Hi. Yay. Yay. Ah, That's all here for, tonight. For Seems like it's been here. a while. It has it's been, been ages. It's, it's the fall ages. back to school special. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't you know it? Yeah, How actually, perfect. you're absolutely spot on. It is back to, <laughs> it's back to school here. Yeah. Some schools opened uh, a day or two ago. Other schools are opening yeah, next week. As yeah. we record this at the weekend. So I don't really want to talk about this right now. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I'm starting a project in a school on Monday. Are you? Oh. Yeah, oh. yeah. Oh. Actually, in a school sounds, with people. Sounds good. Yay. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds good. Um, Not scary at all. So, photography. Photography, photography, photography. Um, what is funny? I just think because they teach photography in schools as well, don't we? That's not necessarily going to get us away <laughs> do from they, school Do topic. they teach so, it in school? Mm -hmm. Where, uh, my where kids do they... school has my kids school has uh, uh has i think two two maybe three dark rooms and a and a decent sized photo studio that's really good that, that is slightly unusual i have to admit mm. that it, uh and i don't think they'll get to use it till they're a little bit older but, they, but, is but it, it is there but is it mandatory Brilliant. or or is it voluntary because we we would say we had one dark room in the, in the school back in the 80s and um I know that that doesn't exist anymore and it was a purely voluntary after hours thing. Mm -hmm. Now this is, I, I believe it's, it's very optional. So okay. it's, it's something you can choose to do when you get to about 14 years old and you get a few choices in the curriculum in this country. So, so they are still okay. doing film photography. Uh, either that or they've got three very well kitted out storerooms. <laughs> Not bad. <laughs> Not bad. <laughs> no, they're into <laughs> platinum platinum printing from <laughs> from digitally printed negatives. I'm, I'm just really looking forward to when my kids get old enough and I can go and like volunteer I can be the volunteer parent you know? oh brilliant <laughs> yeah, that that's... would be a lot of fun that, sounds... that does sound fun um Okay, how, how do we how do we do the segue to our topic of the week? Because oh, um, let's just jump into it, shall we? Let's just jump. Let's into do that. It. Let's do that. Okay. Util utilitarian photography. Photography. Yeah, yeah. But let's define that first, Adrian. Okay, well, uh, I don't know that I have a, an all-encompassing, comprehensive definition, but uh, the the idea behind it uh, for me is to have a discussion around the various different ways we use photography today in a, in a utilitarian way rather than an artistic way, or or um, maybe there's some grey area, of course, but yeah, but particularly today in a utilitarian way, um, and how that might be different from how we did things in the past, like. For example, uh, using uh, a camera as a note taker rather than a pencil and paper, mm. for example. Mm. Photography yeah. has changed quite a bit from 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 the time I, I started where you would yeah, <coughs> do it mainly for art, mainly for um, telling stories um, to, yeah, it, it's, it's free now. So, yeah. And now you can do it to remember way. which floor you parked your car on. <laughs> I do that. Something I do all the Increasingly time. Increasingly using that, that as Constantly, a yeah, yes, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so like I, little I photo could, memos. Yeah, I think that's an actually a very very good description because I think uh, the aesthetic choice will always come second on utilitarian, though not mm. always. I mean, if is an Airbnb homepage for a house apartment utilitarian? photography or is it designed to be somewhat aesthetic and inviting straight into the gray area jeremiah well done <laughs> i live in the gray i would area, totally so. say that's more advertising for advertising purposes isn't it like you're upselling whatever you have except on, on except Airbnb. for one thing if you look at so many of those photographs they're very bland they're horribly lit they just <laughs> do you know what yeah. that's really interesting yeah. and i think i think this that is uh something that may be a situation where american culture is different to 
European culture and, and, and speci- especially UK culture, because we don't have a thriving industry of real estate photography in the UK in the same way that we don't have senior portraits. Um, it, it's just not it's just not a marketplace here. It's just not done. It's it's right. So so your real estate agent will, or, or as, we, as we call them here, just estate agents, um, they will come around and they will have a little point and shoot camera and they will stand in the corner of the room and try and take as much of it as wide well, an angle as possible and well, then just put it on the internet. Well, as you as you mentioned Airbnb well. earlier, Airbnb has has established worldwide uh, a more real estate professional real estate photography because mm. when when they kicked off one of their uh, one of their differentiating factors was that they would, if you asked, if you asked them, they would send you a real estate photographer to have your listing professionally photographed. That mm, was that right? Airbnb. Di- I'm not sure they do this anymore, but um, at least in the beginning, that was the norm. So they established good photography on their website, and uh, you could you could see the difference between the photos that had a little Airbnb logo on them. But um, mm. they established uh, it wasn't well paying. I talked to a couple of people who did it, um, uh, but um, they had a minimum quality level. They knew how to shoot interiors, and uh, that okay. really upped the quality worldwide. The, so that's um, interesting. Would you say, do you- the tool that we use to do our, our gallery tours is actually when when we. It seems to be mostly aimed at estate agents and all the sample stuff that they're trying, you know, trying to sell oh, it to you. Oh, that's the 360 it. stuff? Oh, yeah, completely. So uh, I think estate agents have probably upped their game a bit in the last few years. Do you guys know a catalog called Uline or Uline? It, they, they Heard make of it. Packing, packing crates, boxes, cardboard of every <laughs> description, you know, shipping stuff, tape. <laughs> Well, yeah. Their catalog would be a great example of utilitarian <laughs> yeah. photography. It's just yeah. like a cardboard box yeah. on white, you yeah. know, evenly <laughs> lit. A bit of plastic yeah. pipe, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> uh, yeah. And and so I always imagine the photographer. <laughs> okay, bring it in, bring it out, bring it in, bring it out. Well, well I think that's how it's done, isn't it? I it mean, is. a lot of it oh. is. And e- uh, I've read about uh, photographers who shoot for... Uh, I guess it's, it's similar in a way, but e- e-commerce fashion, you know, that sort of, yeah. Uh, and it's, yeah, you get a, get a job for Amazon and you'll be shooting 10, you know, 10 hours a day and literally things are ferrying through, you know, ferrying through your little, mm. you know, uh, set up st- studio. Set up. I've, uh, little white bug. I've, I've had the pleasure years ago to visit the, f- the target photo studios of, of target <laughs> in the U S <laughs> Um, they are in uh, in Minneapolis, and uh, I spent a couple of hours there watching over their shoulders. And this was this was the okay. Of course, they that's catalog photography. That is um, advertising photography. Mm. But the way it was set up, it was really this. It was like like uh, like making a car. There was an a, a, the products came in there were people who fluffed them up and make them look good and 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 took the stickers off then there were photographers who had a set time frame to take those photos it was in a big big uh floor in a warehouse with curtains in between different compartments about like 15 photographers doing uh taking photos setting things up um and then the products went back to people who packed things up and put them back in the boxes and sent them out again and uh, and then there were other people who there was a whole wall of like ten or twelve people with IMAX uh, and Lightroom wow. right, editing Just, the photos. Wow. It was a real a, a real That's like in a car factory. factory. Yeah, it was yeah. factory you, work. Is is this robotics uh, takeover? area you know what i mean to scan an item know what it is it, it was more than that it was more than that because because no, they were making what's coming possibly oh yeah probably <laughs> this kind yeah. of reminds me of going that to that the would Harry be easily Potter automated studios, wouldn't it like, but this is this is not really utilitarian photography in a way that photography is being used as a utility it's more the way it was done was very like a like a meatpacking plant of sorts mm. Yeah, very interesting. Yeah, 
yeah very very interesting in indeed actually it's because there's so much so i don't know there's so much photography isn't there that's going on i mean yeah for, for me there's a personal element to it as well so so today um i've had a fantastic day out um at a, a thing called fully charged outside which is uh, a, a show that specializes in uh, electric vehicles and home solar energy and storage and and all sorts of stuff to do with sustainable energy there have been panel discussions there have been presentations there's test drives i test i test rode an electric bicycle today that was my first time ever on an electric bicycle which yeah. was which was fun but kind of scary because a bicycle is a machine that you're 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 your whole being feels that it's natural to be a hundred percent in control of a bicycle because because that's how you've grown up and ridden bicycles yeah. all your yeah. life getting on a bicycle that suddenly has a mind of its own is a bit scary <laughs> <laughs> i i wasn't isn't it that they support you i've ridden some and they were more like supporting your your pedaling they're two uh, kinds. They're, 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 yeah, they're, so, so it is a bit like that. But we had this tiny little test yeah. track. We were going on a little oval. And, ah. and what happened was, as you did your sort of three or four revolutions to get the electricity to kick in, you were pretty much at the end of the straight. And so it kicked in and oh. took you forward just as you were expecting to slow down and turn around the corner. So it was it was, it was, was fun. Uh, don't get me wrong. It was fun. And, uh, yeah, the, um, uh, the, it was, yeah, it was And a bit was scary. Good. And you know, a bit scary, but <laughs> but you know the, the point about that is that so that having had a fantastic day out, the point about that is is that I I didn't take a notepad and a pen with me. Anything I wanted to do uh, was uh, was photography. Anything I wanted to yeah. capture. So yeah, I've come home with a few bits of yeah flyers and leaflets and stuff like mm. that. Um, but there was a lot of photographing QR codes. Uh, there was uh, and there was a lot you know for my own personal stuff just you know clicking here okay there's a mm. car here there's a sheet of information beside it I'll take a photograph mm. of that and I can read it later at my leisure that sort of thing so there's, um, a lot of and, utilitarian photography for me today and mm. uh, you know we could add to that crime scene photographs medical photographs mm. um, museum archive yes like objects uh, yeah. uh, scientific with rulers yeah. and coin sizes yeah. to ascribe yeah. you know um, size and width and dimension in, in fact if i was to go back through my camera roll in the last few weeks like just say after my holidays every single picture on it is like you could be describe it as utilitarian because it's it's for work or it's for it's not taken with any photographic great it's just more documentary than anything else to share you know to other channels or whatever it's, it's not really anything to do uh -huh. with photography so you know it's just taking over i do but well, yeah but i don't want to say i don't want this to sound like it's a mm. a negative thing no though, because, it's not you know, it's not it's, it's very easy to wax <laughs> lyrical about the creative arts and and mm. you know, to, you know uh, as photographers we're some sort of higher order of being because we have creative vision that nobody else can possibly <laughs> match and and <laughs> and yeah that's that's very easy to do but actually it's it's not the whole picture is it uh, uh it's um yeah, it's not the whole truth uh, of it all and there's a lot of this stuff just ask my dentist for example who, who who absolutely requires photographs of his patient's teeth so that he can uh, he can keep records but it's um it, it, it just just was something that struck me as like well yeah how how the world has changed how you don't need a pen and paper anymore and necessarily uh, unless it's a preference maybe that's the way of thinking about it maybe it's a preference mm. and just that there are so many things now you can do you can find your car with a photograph you took on your phone um you can find the new car that you want to buy from the electric car show mm -hmm. on your phone as well, well if you're lucky <laughs> As you as you were uh, at at fully charged, um, there's one area that is is definitely uh, using photography in different ways now, and that is um, that is the whole field of autonomy of full of of, of self driving cars because. Um, not just Tesla. Tesla is kind of well known for moving to vision only. They are they they're ditching the radar sensors. They're using only cameras to determine what is where on the road and so on. Others are going that way too now. So um, that is one of the ways where photography, in this case probably videography, but uh, mm -hmm. it, they're taking 36 photos a second. Pretty much, um, which is crazy, isn't it? Which is amazing, and uh, it's, it seems to be working quite well. So, so that is an area, and the other is um, that 
photography has and the and the ever ready available photography in your pocket uh, has turned into a really effective communication shortcut. You know, a picture says more mm. than a thousand words. Mm -mm. And uh, just a few examples. Um, if I'm in charge of cooking dinner, instead of shouting through the house uh, to Monica, dinner's ready, <laughs> I'll send her a photo of the dinner. <laughs> and she'll be right there. Or, yeah, yeah. or in, uh, the, the other day I did some physical work outside in the garden and it was, and, and, and instead of... Uh, telling her how hard it was, I sent her a photo of my watch listing, <laughs> listing the amount of used calories and my heart beats, you know? There so you that I love not, that you two are so geeky that that's a it, thing for it you. It did not require brilliant. any additional words. It was like obvious, of course, or, um, or if, I, if, I, if we get a packet, I'll put it on the counter and I'll send her a shot of the packet label. Because then... So you, you know she, your problem? Your house is too big. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's a problem. <laughs> no, uh, she's, well, it, she, it is she's if you need work. all of that technology just to communicate to each other. No, she, she's at work. She's 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 busy in a, in a Zoom meeting or something. <laughs> um, this way, she doesn't only know that she's got mail. She knows who it's, who it's from. She knows the size of it and so on. I think that there would be a very interesting gallery or museum show of taking utilitarian images submitted yeah. blowing them up you know uh, yeah, to yeah, scale yeah. yeah hanging them and trying to find the common aesthetic or not <laughs> in these pieces and redefining their purpose as expression of art mm -hmm. that would be i'm sure that whatever you did photographing a pebble uh with a little ruler next to it mm would be very, very different in a file of scientific research than blown up to four by five feet hung in a gallery. <laughs> uh, it's the same image taken with mm. the same process, but the presentation changes the meaning. And I think mm -hmm. when you look at utilitarian from a, you know, as Adrian uh, intimated, a snob point of view, <laughs> you know, uh, where the, the, the light, shadow, tone, color, compositional elements are not taken into consideration when the image is photographed. It's just photographed mm. uh, the best way it can be captured to reveal its essence to the person taking it. What what happens in you know in the cracks between the instinctive composition in other words we are all making these choices we we know that we want oh that's too dark oh that's too light or maybe i'll just move around here not because we think we are demonstrating our incredible artistic uh, <laughs> application of mm -hmm. how to interpret a stone and a ruler but but we're just doing it to get the relative size of the stone. And yet, is there something instinctive in the way we see, feel, uh, our exposure to work that there will is. influence that? For, for me, yeah. being a photographer, looking at the world through, through <clears throat> com compos composing eyes, um, I find myself, not always, but sometimes with these, shooting a picture of a price tag or something, um, that I that I that I arrange it a bit. That I take that I move it a bit to the side so there's no <laughs> nothing dis distracting in the background. I yeah, I do too. Tend <laughs> to do that. Yes, yeah. I would do that too. Yeah, yeah that, that too. that's yeah. yes. I I would have uh, you you can't switch that off, can you? When you've spent so long, so many years training yourself to see that stuff, you can't suddenly switch it off. It just becomes a part of you. Right. I find so, also that that sometimes I will take, for me a utilitarian image which is remember this street corner or you know remember this wall for later um mm. to, to create something out of it and i will then use those things to create something else mm -hmm. later on and um, so they they just become part of a larger file of partially completed or work in progress or whatnot even though uh, when I shot them, I may have shot them for a different reason, but as they remain in my files, I revisit them and, and often transform them. How do you revisit them? 
um, do you do you think oh this 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 yeah but is it <laughs> is it more a search and try to find it or or do you do you tag them so you can find them later do I never I don't tag them uh, because I just I would <laughs> run out of tags and then I would because because there's so many I mean I don't even know how many I have in my in no, my that is the biggest. I, I just take that it. That is the random, biggest problem. And with it's this. kind of like, oh, like the other day, I needed to find a photograph. I could not remember when I took it or where it mm. was, and and literally, I just had to scroll and scroll and scroll, and then all of a sudden, I went, oh yeah, that event, that picture happened before that, yeah. and then I was able uh -huh. to kind of. <laughs> what did it take me? You know, on my own, maybe ten minutes. Yeah, um, story of my life was, there. Right? <laughs> But yes, I don't have an instinctive or intuitive or an organized way of of uh, organizing my my photographs on my iPhone. But when I go with intention uh, and shoot a group, what I will do, even though it uploads to the cloud, and, and I I will then take that group. I will transfer it by AirDrop to my computer. Mm -hmm. I will put it in a file. I will put it on Lightroom, and I will give it a title. Oh, that's really so, good. <laughs> and, and, and if it's something I really want to work in, I'll create a catalog of that input and put it there for work. So, and, and so I do that. So, Imar, I have a question specifically yeah. to you because you are the only one among us who shoots exclusively on an iPhone. And yeah. uh, so I'd be interested in... What 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 do you think? Just just from a gut feel, what's the percentage of utilitarian versus art type photos in your life? At the moment, uh, at the moment, it's ninety uh, percent. Yeah, ninety really. percent art. Yeah, no, ninety no, percent like utility utilitarian. Yeah, yeah. But those ten yeah. percent well, documentary are stuff maybe or work things or you know. Yeah, the ten percent. Yeah, that's and, good. And Jeremiah. what do you like and what do you do to find to to make it easier to oh, find the the artsy photos do better? Do you put them I, in albums? Do you? <laughs> I've been judging how long it's been since my holiday by how many shite photos are after <laughs> <laughs> my holiday pictures. And when I do want to go back and revisit them and maybe edit one, it's taken me longer and longer to get there. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm thinking, okay, Al I need to actually need to do something about this now. Albums the work are a good stuff, way, right? They are, but the work stuff, I have to say, takes over my personal devices way too much. And I have started, I've got a hard drive and I've started to, um, you know, archive this stuff because it is important to keep it. And, you know, when it's on your phone, you're like, oh, maybe, I, maybe I'll need that. Maybe I shouldn't delete it just yet. Maybe I'll, and I, I'm not known for, you know, being really good at backing things up. So, um, yeah, I think uh, just with a bit of organization and albums, but, you know. Yeah. But Imar, you know, you, uh, I'm, you should I'm, back up because, uh, you I'm know what I'm very organized say? at work in my personal life completely disorganized but you know what they say about you know motorcycles and hard drives uh <laughs> well. they're either down or they're going down <laughs> that's a cheery thought uh, that, that's, <laughs> so, that's wonderful yeah so I, i'd get on it and start to back up your stuff <laughs> back up my stuff it's not that important <laughs> not right now, but maybe in no. 10 years, five years, two years. Maybe, it may maybe, be maybe, maybe. Yeah. All those utilitarian yeah. photos may end up to be like the new aesthetic. Oh, they yeah. will. They yeah. will certainly tell us. There could be some gold yeah. in there. Yeah. So, so let, let's talk about that a little bit, actually, because there's a, there's a, some, a few threads of things that we talk about occasionally on, on this podcast that, that could all add up together to something quite strong. Because if you have like a huge archive of utilitarian photos that are, I know, mm. sitting in cloud backups that have been there automatically, And if you think about uh, what, what Chris sometimes says about photo archaeology and, mm. you know, the, the in, you know the, there's you I can imagine. And then if you think about some of the other stuff that we talk about, like, you know, um, in, intelligence, search, you know, artificial intelligence and all of that kind of stuff. Mm. Um, you know, I could imagine that um, that that 
combined, if you combine all of those, does that then undermine something else that we mention occasionally, which is that uh, it, I forget the exact words, but the, uh, the 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 last fifty years will be the least documented in history, or something like that. I can't remember what the phrase is. Jeremiah, you'll be able to correct me on that. I'm sure. We were just uh, talking about the fact that that uh, a single EMP will wipe out all historical records of mankind <laughs> for the last hundred years, or so or fifty years of. Uh, I mean, we uh, we also <laughs> live in in uh, in the age of the the advent of artificial intelligence. And uh, the Googles and the Apples and the Facebooks of this world have uh, have for quite a while now done a lot to help you find your photos again by uh, analyzing what's in them. So you can in the search field you can on your on your smartphone you can type dog, cats, uh, buildings, cars, and they they recognize at this point probably ten, fifteen thousand different things relatively reliably so so um that is helping with the archaeology um yeah. digging out old stuff yeah also I, mean, I, I i do think that when more uh, images are put on the ifps the the interplanetary uh, file system on blockchains there'll be much more to archive uh, rather than because it will be a little less um centralized in, just in terms of search the definition thereof but it so they'll there may be more but more difficult to locate um mm -hmm. though that's going to be a very interesting because there's a lot of work now moving to that kind of decentralized story you know the moment we have uh the uh, the first outpost post on mars um there will be such a long latency of sending things back and forth that you all you'll have to do is send things to mars and then have a repeater that bounces it back to you when it arrives on mars and that and that time frame in between that will be our backup because it will be stored somewhere in the ether uh over oh it'll be in flight yeah. it will be in flight <laughs> you know, and uh, yeah that is one of the one of the one of the great things about going to an electric car show today there was a good selection of geeky t-shirts and i'm pretty <laughs> sure i saw i saw one fella had one of these occupy <clears throat> t-shirts on it but it said occupy mars yeah <laughs> <laughs> But it, so the, I, I guess the the yeah I mean, backup sort of thing. I mean the te the the AI thing you were talking about, Chris. There. I mean, I I, I think a lot of what, um, yeah. There's 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 a lot of uh, marketing speak around AI. But if you well, if you want to talk something about a bit something a bit more specific, uh, like machine learning, for example, um. You know, uh, that's what a lot of these systems are doing now. The, the machine, the machine, the software itself is is learning to recognize stuff. And a great example uh, for photography is anybody who's got a device that recognizes faces and will then pop up occasionally and say, you know, say, uh, you know, is this a picture of Ema? Is this a picture of e You have added 35 mm. more pictures of Ema to your catalogue of Ema photos. And, you know, that, that is machine learning at work. That is the, the, the software in your device actually is learning to recognise fa that face of a specific person. And having... Having young children um, really brings this home because I can have at any one time that the phone will recognize photos of my children from when they're literally just a couple of months old to where they are today, their age yeah. today. And it will it, it will just go. Yeah, that that's that's that what person that's that person that's that person. And it gets it right all the mm. time. Um, and very rarely do I get a false positive match. I think I've had one ever, and it happened to be fairly recently. And I was like, "Wow, that's never happened before." So there, there is a lot of this stuff now. Okay, um, uh, you know, is the machine learning going to learn to recognise uh, the the variety of squirrels in Jeremiah's backyard, or is it going to uh, is it going to recognise? I don't know. Um, <laughs> A refrigerator from an Airbnb. I don't know. You know. Where did I take a photo of this fridge? Oh yeah, it's that Airbnb <laughs> that I stayed at, you know, five years ago. I don't know. I don't know. But the the util I think the utilitarian stuff is going to be searchable. Maybe not just mm. yet. And I, I don't know that you know we will what's lose it all. Excellent. Um what excellent use of the AI is those plant identifier apps. Um Yes. They're amazing. Yeah. 
They're just amazing. I haven't really used those. I mean, I, I, oh, I've heard they're so pretty good. magical. Oh, yeah, my they're, God. They're good. Yeah, we have, really we good have, fun. Well, my yeah. wife uses it. But, yeah. but some of them will even tell you, oh, this plant needs water. Oh, wow. Yeah, they'll oh, okay. even read the leaves and, and, uh, <laughs> yeah, and, and kind yeah. of do some kind of analytical, whether it's... I just love to take them out. Really. That's a fairly easy guess, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> like a walk Either in the that woods. Or this be such plant an is completely destroyed by fire. <laughs> <laughs> that. Sorry, Imar? Like a walk in the woods can be such an education and you see all these tiny little wildflowers and you're like, oh, what's that? And mm. then they have all these gorgeous names and it's, yeah, it's really... Fascinating to kind of yeah, absorb that, is, that that's, kind of that is, yeah, that sort of augmented reality, yeah. you know, stuff as well. Yeah, that's mm. well, that, that I guess that that counts. That's interesting, isn't it? So, and so, you can also share. Then you can share your like if you were plant find, you share it. So there's kind of that aspect to it as well. Then that you know you, you get to see everybody else's shots of the same plant, um, and then you can kind of put yours next to it and say, oh yeah, I'm right or you know it's, it's really good i think one of the most Nerdy, but good. utilitarian uses of photography and iphone for me personally is when i make a bank deposit by phone and i have to <laughs> photograph the check that is a process it gives me the frame so i have to put it in the frame it tells me if i'm too light or too dark Right. Uh -huh. And it also reads the, the check amount and makes sure that you've entered the wrong amount here. So take the photograph uh -huh. or recalculate. Uh -huh. uh, that is a very kind of interesting um, kind of use of utilitarian it's, photography it, to it, enable a practice. You know, I find this really funny because I'm not sure. Is America maybe the only country on this planet that is still using checks? Probably mm, the British. The British government still mm. issues checks. Oh, they do. Very okay, because because I have I haven't used a check can't in, remember the in last thirty time years probably. So, so mm. I re I received a check from the government the other day um, because uh, I sold a car and they owed me some of the road tax, the vehicle tax, back. And you and, got a check. Uh, uh, yeah, and they absolutely know my bank account because I pay my taxes. Mm -hmm. I pay money in electronically, mm -hmm. but they can't pay it out electronically. They we still send me a check. We get checks from uh, residuals from the Directors Guild. Right. Those are sent out. And, uh, you know, I, what do I do with it? I scan them. Yeah. <laughs> turn them electronic. So um, it is. It is a. It is a modern means of uh, of uh, capturing images to use an archaic method of sending money around. Exactly. Amazing. It, exact. <laughs> that's exactly right. Um, it, it's it's the most bizarre thing. And and what's interesting is, I'm not sure that with certain kinds of things where where the checks are arriving and they're. Um, they're random. You never know when they're going to arrive. You never know what the amount is going to be. If these were kind of continually deposited in your bank, some of these checks are for significant amounts, but others, like uh, two checks that I got last week, checks in the mail stamped <laughs> for two cents. Oh, hey. <laughs> what? <laughs> Think about the cost of processing oh, yeah, the God. check. It is cheaper to just mailing it's the, cheaper to send them out than to filter them out before they send them. It's actually cheaper probably. to make a call saying, "Do you want me to send this to you?" Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, but I, there is no way that I could personally keep up with direct deposit of like two cent checks because knowing banks the way I do, I think they would charge me several dollars <laughs> to deposit a two cent check. That that's my my instinct. Whether that that's true or not, I don't know. But um, so th there is some kind of uh, disconnect in terms of money. I mean, money, you know, paper money. That's also you know a relic or becoming a relic. It is a somewhere. bit, yeah. But it's uh, it's certainly here. I went out today and I was halfway down the road before I realised I hadn't taken my wallet. I had no cash. I had no cards. Nothing. Mm. I, I just oh, paid for everything my on my phone. watch all day. Yeah, but, yeah. <laughs> yeah. but it's it it, it is a, it, it's an interesting one. Can we can we talk? Just I don't want to get too uh, to, you know, to spoil the the nice positive <laughs> vibe we've got going on here. Um, but talking. Building on what Ema said about the recognition uh, of plants, 
uh, yeah, there, there is a there is a contentious political use for for some of this machine learning and this utilitarian photography, isn't it? Which is is to track people. And you for face had to bring politics into it. Uh, is that politics, That's, or is it? Uh, um, maybe, is it don't know. No, don't know. Not, not, not I quite. think most, most let, let, I guess it's safe to say most most places seem to be banning the use of facial recognition technology, don't they? Rather than uh, adopting it. But. I don't know what's most places. I uh, don't think <laughs> yeah. so. No, fair point. Wise, fair no. point. No. Fair point. So what one to one to watch out for then? Because I, I think uh, and uh, yeah, not not to dwell on it, but I think because I think there's some great uses of utility in photography and and where it's going to go in the future. You know, um, I wonder if they'll be able to tell me if the milk's gone off before I open it and drink it or something. <laughs> what about, do, do you guys have... Re- Your nose like can do that for you, Adrian. That's true. <laughs> Sorry, Jeremiah? Do you have uh, ring doorbells, you know, that kind of thing? Yeah, we do. Like we, we, we personally Dorber, don't Dorber. have one. We, we, we don't have one here. I think my parents have one. Oh, they've got, or, or an equivalent anyway. I've got yeah. a ding-dong doorbell. And yeah. some friends yeah, I have, do as well. Anytime someone uh, rings my bell, it captures an image of them. Yes, I think my it, brother has some of that because I remember once going to their house to drop something off, and it just so happened they were out, and uh, and I and I didn't know that I rang the doorbell, and then my sister-in-law called me, and she was like the other side of the country. She said, "Are you what are you doing outside our house?" <laughs> <laughs> isn't isn't uh, just time. just just to just to keep that dystopian vibe up? Uh, is uh, <laughs> isn't Bell the one that the police also had access to in some places? Rings. Yeah, ring. ring. Yeah, ring. ring. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Be- here it's it's become uh, sort of uh, I don't want to say controversial because um, you know it's used by neighborhoods. You know, people post them. It becomes like a watch for this guy or this guy oh, yeah. broke into our thing. Or, Pl- plenty of plenty uh, of it, stuff on YouTube as well. Exactly. So it, yeah. it creates paranoia and it also creates a sense of safety at the same time. I don't know. It probably nets out exactly the same. <laughs> Just like what the hell? But, don't but, do it. But um, uh, you know, in terms of somebody ringing the doorbell and me being uh, across the country, I've answered it to you know, to people who were maybe less than trustworthy and said, uh, "No, go away. I'm busy." And they they went. Mm. They yeah. didn't know. That's, they did so, not know whether I were I was home. Mm-hmm. Or not. Ah, interesting. Can we get can we go back to the car thing actually? Because Chris mentioned the car thing and about the amount of video being processed by an imagery sure. being processed by car. Clearly, clearly very utilitarian, um, and clear and and also I mean so, so much data being processed there on our, so much visual data there being processed mm-hmm. on our behalf uh, that they had to invent a whole new networking technology to take care of the data flows. So you know, this is called, yeah, uh, referring here to the five G networks, which an individual walking around a town doesn't need but to drive is it for a car to autopilot and not crash into other cars or run over dogs or babies or whatever it certainly needs to be able to exchange huge amounts of data um so i think that's a that's a pretty a, a pretty positive yeah pretty pretty but, although we did what we i did watch i robot with my kids the other day it raised some questions <laughs> i have to say <laughs> Do you think, uh, is there another level of utilitarian photography that we are overlooking, which is photography that is taken by machines, which would be a good example of of a car image making, Mm -hmm. that is interpreted and interpolated by a machine, um, and then its use is applied to that very machine? with no human interaction at all in terms of reading the images or processing it or actually making any kind of adjustment. It's just machine to machine to machine. Um, That's a very interesting kind of conceptual basis for the ultimate utilitarian Mm -hmm. uh, image making. I mean, in, in, in many ways, I think Google was trying to build some kind of dictionary, pictionary, whatever, where... You could say a name; it would bring up a picture of a dog. You could show it a dog; it would it would say what it was. Um, and you know, of course, the end result is, of course, human uh, interaction. But um, I'm sure there are are ways. For, you know, robotic surgery. Oh, I would, I would imagine it is already happening. As I said, yeah. with with uh, the advent of of cars that can drive themselves, um, there will be more and more camera in cameras in use that are. 
I mean, eventually we're talking about robo taxis. We're talking about uh, cars that will have no drivers and no steering wheel and um, robo surgery, where, where you can you can have the camera <laughs> moving inside a body, which says, you know, one half of a millimeter to the left, you'll hit a vein to the robot. So let's keep clear of that and and be able to laser something so precisely, sure. image to machine. You know, with the ultimate um, kind of. It's only the question: where Where do you draw the line? Because there are um, also um, machines. What if the robot decides it doesn't want to listen? <laughs> <laughs> well, it, by the way, in war, that would be a great. That's uh, that's that's question. what I was going towards. Um, Keeping the dystopia uh, <laughs> yeah. up, you know what I mean? You yeah. s you send in whether it's drones and armed drones and whatnot to search for a person or a series of people and just send them in. They just allow allow the phone. drone to make its own decisions <laughs> and... Uh... Or smart <sighs> bullets, as they say. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm reading a novel at the moment where that actually is a thing. I mean, it is, it is a sci-fi novel set at some indeterminate part, you know, point in the, in the distant future, but... Uh, they, they have that exact same con context uh, where they had uh, assassin drones that were AIs sent to infiltrate, in this case, not humans, but alien spaceships and, and kill aliens. There we go. But hey. We are such a violent species. Let's... Uh, do we, do we need to wrap this up or can we? Yeah, picks we have week. some good picks yeah, of the week. Some, I bet. We, we have do. some good picks of the week. Let's, let's do picks of the week. <laughs> and I want to start with Imar. What did you bring us? This Imar? is brilliant. Yeah. Have you got it? I'm opening it. Todd McClellan. There we go. Oh, hold on. <clears throat> How about this? Yeah. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. This Ooh. guy takes objects, deconstructs them, <laughs> and photographs them. I've seen this. Isn't this amazing? I've seen this guy. I love this stuff. It's <laughs> yeah. really good. It's really, really, really cool. Really so we're so looking that's utilitarian at we're looking taken at. to a whole new level. And beautiful in their own <laughs> And gorgeous, way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The camera one is lovely. The camera one is, yeah. And it's like that's, binoculars. That's, and, uh, that's very nice, an old Pentax SLR. And laying something out this nicely uh, is yeah. it, generally known as knolling. K-N-O-L-L-I-N-G, look it up. That, is it? That's oh, a word. Okay. That I did not know that. Wow. That is a word. I think it goes back to back to a company named Knoll that had catalogs that were laid out in this uh, way. Uh, All right. It's amazing. Okay. Like K N O K N O L L I N G Knolling. Oh. Yeah. Knolling. I have some Knoll furniture. There you go. I wonder if it's the same. <laughs> this is amazing stuff. Yeah, it's Isn't beautiful. It really cool. Uh, especially yeah, yeah. laying things out in the shape of what it was before. Oh, yeah. It, yeah. Yes, yeah. that's interesting. Mm. There's a few that he's got which um <laughs> <laughs> with photography equipment laid out to resemble weapons. Yep, there, <laughs> there we go. There we go. But, uh, That's a statement. Yeah, these are great. <laughs> Interesting. Why did he didn't construct that fender amplifier? That doesn't seem like the right thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> Might break the valves. <laughs> Amazing. Thanks for sharing that. That is cool. Oh, the music. Oh, oh. Mm -hmm. button pressing. At least the music's working this time. Hey. Yeah, not doing maybe we too should bad. get an AI in to do the music for the show. <laughs> Probably. Um, let's see. Might be more reliable. How about this one, Adrian? Ah, well, there you go. See, there's another link back to the car show today. Um, so this is a a use of uh. Of photography, utilitarian use of photography. It relates to a car, um, uh, <coughs> specifically in this case to a little car called the Honda E, which is a delightful looking little thing. Uh, and uh, it has, instead of having uh, door mirrors so that you can see behind you, it has cameras. And in, inside, just in the inside and the edges of the dashboard are little TV screens that show uh, the uh -huh. what, what you would get from, from looking in an actual mirror um 
you it's really interesting to me because it is an example of utilitarian photography uh, in this case you know showing you what's behind you and um, and i also have to ask the question does it have any utility <laughs> in the sense that you could easily do what it's doing with just a normal mirror <laughs> So, so it's it's a bit of a paradox for me. This one. Think but, of but all the silver one. it's saving. <laughs> <laughs> well, possibly. Think of all the rare earth metals it's got built into it. Like. I was about yeah. to say that. Yeah, but yeah, it's yeah. it is it is an example of a paradox for me around this because it's clearly a utilitarian use case, but but it's also clearly a bit of a gimmick and not strictly necessary. So exactly go, right. Go in, figure. In, in other words, know. how can we make a mirror really complicated? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It. 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 Uh, and what are the failure modes for that? And what? Where does all that? Does is it capturing the data? Is it just a live image all the time? Is it saving some of that? Those are good questions. Information. Oh. I. I don't know. I had assumed it was just live. I mean. And where does that go? <laughs> is it being saved? It's being used against you at one point. Yeah. Back to yeah. the dystopia. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Jeremiah. Sorry. What is yours? <laughs> oh. <laughs> This is, uh, it's a book that I have, uh, a book uh, called Ferox. Uh, this is an artist who has spent a great deal of time and energy, here you go, fabricating an entire mm. false narrative of exploration yes. and scientific research. I have that book. <laughs> and it is kind of purposely done with uh, in, in many ways, the lowest kind of aesthetic, like here's a great example, just <laughs> just like these kind of uh, throwbacks or, or ghosts of 1950s, early 60s scientific research yeah. photographs, you know, notebooks, um, objects. Um, the book is absolutely fantastic, and it, it and it's a pro. Here's a great example of what's in it. Uh -huh. There's, um, it's printed, I think, purposely, it's sort of a little lower quality, so it, <laughs> it has a kind. You know, it's not presented in a snappy fine art way, but it's quite thick, and it's it's completely committed. This is awesome, um, and. If you did not know, you'd go, what it's is... It's a bit like a textbook, it's isn't it? Very it's very much like that. It's, it, it, and it, it evokes emotions because it, it matches patterns that we already know from mm. different contexts and... I'm, I'm, I think I'm in love with this. I think I need to yeah, I mean, get my hands on that. It's, mm. it's, a, it's a, <laughs> one of my absolute favorite books. It's, in, it's really <sighs> incredible. And... and uh, <laughs> you know, hats off to an artist who'll do that. And I thought it would be a good kind of it's commitment. Well, it's also, you know, uh, utilitarian photography, uh, mm. using utilitarian aesthetic to create something right. that's resonant and a little <laughs> bit deeper. And yet commenting on it only in passing. There's no winking at the camera. There's no, hey, hey. It, it is absolutely committed. Um, to I need to get myself a copy of that. That sounds, great. sounds amazing. Yeah. yeah. Very good. So I will take us on a little bit of a journey. Um, Here. There we go. Oh, wow. <laughs> there it is. Show us how, how thick. Yeah, that, that's oh, quite it's, a it's, lot of material. Well, that's, a, that's a big book. <laughs> wow. I need this. I oh, need yeah, this in at, my life. Look at all those, look, all look those the, tables uh, of alternative yeah, facts. Yeah, you know, <laughs> I need this in my life. Um, Absolutely not. Okay, so, so um, bear with me here. Do you remember back in the, well, it's roughly in the 1980s, uh, sometimes like in magazines, you would get a record? Print it yeah, on, on, on a plastic foil, you know? And you punch out the center. And, yeah. Yes. Um, interesting enough, that wasn't new at the time because the Russians had done this 30 years prior already. Mm. And okay. in a very unusual way that is linked to very utilitarian photography. So mm. here's the story. In the 1950s Soviet Russia, the citizens wanted Western music like jazz, rock and roll, that kind of stuff. But mm. there were no reel-to-reel -reel tapes there yet. 
they weren't a thing yet. Uh, so to make copies, they needed to press vinyl. They needed to to get vinyl, but the vinyl was very expensive. It was very hard to come by. So they got inventive and went to the medical archives and uh, to the hospital trash bins and used exposed x-rays to print the music on. Wow. Wow. It's called, Bad. it is called bone music. Ah. Wow. Wow. Isn't, oh, I mean, look really at that. Good. Oh. So, wow. so the, the, what I read about it, this, uh, I'm, I'm going to link to an episode of the 99% oh, wow. Invisible podcast where they mm, talk yeah. about this and they have photos on their website. Um, the inventor of this uh, method it, it ended up spending five years in Siberia in prison for this invention. Oh, wow. 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 And uh, I, I mean, X-rays is probably one of the most utilitarian types of photography and sure. using that to yeah. press music out of And then they, then they <laughs> took scissors and they rounded them and they ended up oh. um, having... Wow. They played. LPs. Does anyone know what they sounded like? Not not good, I would think. <laughs> yeah, but I'd like to hear it. You know, I'd like to hear that. I'm not sure <laughs> they're easy to come by. I've looked on eBay to be honest. Anyone... <laughs> I haven't I'm found. Getting, I'm guessing. I'm guessing on a on an X-ray sheet, uh, an S acetate. I'm guessing the grooves weren't very deep. Uh, it depends on the on the film on the substrate. So, but anyway, mm. uh, bone music is uh, listen to the 99% Invisible episode about it. Also. Also, I did put in our uh, notes overall. Um, I drew. It to, I think I've we've mentioned him before, but Trevor Paglin, who is a sensational artist, um, who's done series of uh, secret places, you know, shot with you know two thousand millimeter lenses over the desert at night and those kinds of things. He's a very well-known artist that integrates kind of scientific research, spy technology, and aesthetics. And um, his work is well worth looking at in that gray zone of utilitarian aesthetic mm -hmm. and um, real conceptual-based photography. All right. So, mm -hmm. utilitarian photography with uh, everything from the price tag to mirrors in electric cars to mm -hmm. LPs pressed on <laughs> oh, good. on photos. I'm going away now to watch The Matrix. <laughs> <laughs> Not sure that's going to help. <laughs> I don't think yeah. you have to watch it. <laughs> you're living in I'm it. already in it. <laughs> yeah, right. How do you know you're not? Did you take the blue or the red pill? <laughs> Uh, they are making, uh, I think, the fourth Matrix film now. So happening okay, now. Brilliant. Yeah. <sighs> There's only fun. one good Matrix film anyway. So it'll be a documentary. <laughs> with that, <laughs> we'll be out of here. Thank you so much. Until next time, everyone. Take care and bye bye. Take care. Bye bye. <clears throat>